Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to give you a quick demo on how to create a subtle but very plain background. I hope that you find this helpful. If you do then please do hit that subscribe button and also check out all my other playlists here on YouTube. I love to paint complicated backgrounds in my portraits, but there's a lot to be said for simplicity sometimes, especially when you've got a subject as cute as little Duncan here. So why is this a painted background? Why didn't I just choose a light colour of paper and not bother putting any pigment on the background? Of course, this works for many artists, but I don't for a few reasons. Firstly, I like to use a mid-tone paper, sometimes even a darker tone than this sienna colour that you can see around the edge here. I really like how a mid-tone, especially a warm toned paper like this, can really affect the overall warmth of the painting. Secondly, I have loads of choice when it comes to the colours in a background like this. The colour choices, which you'll see in the demo, are subtle, but it's not plain white. I can use colours subtly to create a shadow or some sense of surrounding glow to the puppy. And the third reason is so that I can clean up my mess when using so much dark coloured pigment. It's inevitable with those bigger soft pastel sticks that some of the dark pigment might get smudged over your background areas too. Well if I've painted the background like this I can simply pick up the colours that I used for the background and clean up any little areas where I've made a mess. It might not always be possible to remove these marks off bare paper itself. The nice thing is how quickly I can create a plain background in comparison to the many hours spent on a more complex setting. This 14 by 12 inch portrait the background only took me 10 minutes and I'm going to share that with you now. So you can see the colour of the sienna coloured pastel mat, that lovely warm tone. And the first colour that I'm picking up is Unison's A33, that's additional 33. One of my favourites, it's quite a neutral tone, but it's got a nice kind of warm lilac tint to it. So it's not a very dark tone, I would describe this as a light mid-tone. Just kind of crossing over into my light tones really. And I'm using this to pick out the shadow that's in underneath the puppy and just to the left. You can see in the photo reference, he was photographed in some white shelves, so that explains the colour around him. I didn't intend to bother with the horizon line just behind the tail. You can see the edge of the back of the shelf. I just wanted to leave this really plain. But I did want to include especially the shadow underneath the dog because that kind of grounds him on something. Whether there's much there or not, it means that he's not just floating in midair. And I've added also some of the A33 right around the outer edge, especially in the corners. I said that I like to create a bit of a glow around the dog, so I'm going to let some of that A33 colour shine through a bit more in certain areas of the background. So this is A19. Quite a warm, light, neutral tone. So I won't be using any white. It's predominantly made up of these two colours. And I'm not leaning too heavily here. I'm looking to cover most of the paper now with this colour. But I'm barely applying pressure on the paper here. So with the Unison pastels and other soft pastel brands, you barely have to lean on the paper, especially when you're using the pastel on its side like this to cover a large area. 
but you'll notice how many layers I add on the pastel matte paper for this type of smooth background. So that's two layers of colour down. And I start to blend everything together. I can lean quite heavily when I'm blending like this. I really do want to mix the colours. I'd like the finished product to be quite smooth, but if you prefer a bit more texture in your backgrounds, you can also do that and you don't need to blend everything quite as much. But I'm going for a really soft and subtle look. In the end, I kind of want it to look like a white background, something very plain. But in actual fact, there's loads of colour involved that help to complement the colours going on in the dog. So this A33 coming in again, most of the time I'm just very lightly layering up these two colours alone. And I'll go back between the two colours and it gives it that kind of multi-layered look in the end. So rather than just use flat colour, I really like to use these thin coats of colour that when they're all mixed, you can still see all of those different colours shining through. But in this case, it's mostly just going between these two colours so far. So lots of blending. That's a third layer of pastel on some parts of the paper at least, not all the way over. And you can see where I've applied three layers of colour now. It has started to blend a little more smoothly. So that won't start to happen until you get a few layers of pigment on the paper. So I'm back in with A19 again. The paper is starting to fill nicely now on the fourth layer and I'm leaving a little bit more shadow on the left side of the dog and intending to make it a little brighter on the right side so giving the dog a tiny bit of cast shadow both to the left and underneath him. So four layers of pigment on there and it starts to blend really smoothly. I can lean heavier in places where I want to let more of that darker A33 shine through. But I'm using mostly circular motions there just to make it all nice and smooth. Picking up a third colour now, this is Unison's BV1, that's Blue Violet 1. And it's almost white, but with a little hint of lilac to it. So this is the lightest colour that I'll use on the background. The closest thing to white, so no actual white used. And I just want to both cool down the warm A19 colour that I used. And also, this is a little brighter, so I'm lightening up around the top of the dog a little and down the right side. So it's a subtle change. That's what I wanted here, just a very subtle wash of colour. And of course, to create the shadow underneath the dog, because that's what's going to add that little touch of realism into the background, just the shadow alone that grounds the dog. And I've picked up the fourth colour now, this is Dark 14, also a unison. The darkest bit of shadow, of course, being that dark shadow line coming from behind the leg. Lots of blending, softening the edge of that, knocking the colour back a little and strengthening using A33 here, the rest of the more subtle area of shadow between the paws. The 
then I'm just going to add some of that A33 over the top of the darkest shadow here. Lighten it as it comes out from underneath the body. That's where it's at its darkest. So this is a really simple background idea. It doesn't take a lot of time, but I think it ends up looking pretty effective. A bit later on in the painting process, I did a tiny bit more work around the front of the paws, just shaping the shadow underneath the dog a little. Those were things that I wanted to wait and do when I was working on the paws, but that's pretty much it for this style of background. And you could go stronger with the colours. In this case, I wanted to use some hint of the purples that would come later on the dog itself. So it's a good idea to try and take a complementary or a colour out of the painting the, of the main subject and try to use that in the background. So just like here, I'm picking up A19 again and shaping the shadow a little bit, bringing the light again right to the front of the paws. And then just softening the divide between light and shade here, softening that area. So a very fun and quick type of background to create. I think I used a total of about five layers of pastel, which is four or five layers is what you need really to get the pigment starting to blend nice and smoothly. I could continue on with more layers, it would accept it. But for this style of simple background, that's really all you need to do. So you can alter this with more texture, more colour, however you want. But it's worth remembering that a background can be simple too. I hope you find this helpful. If you did, then do take a good look through all my playlists here on YouTube and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And then if you'd like to learn more from my full tutorials, especially about backgrounds, I have a full library of tutorials available through Patreon. And that's where you'll also find this full puppy tutorial series if you'd like to paint little Duncan along with me. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling.